ladies in STEM, my name is Jen Sarah, and I am proud to be one of you. I'm a value stream manager with the Collins Aerospace Ejection and Propulsion Business Unit. As part of the ejection seat team, I work with the U.S. Air Force to upgrade their current ACES-2 ejection seats to the ACES-5, which contain many new safety features. The targeted aircraft are the F-15 Eagle, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the F-22 Raptor, the B-1 Lancer, and the A-10 Warthog. Prior to my role with this group, I wrote software and led engineering teams for a radio product line. Through these experiences, I moved into program management, leading teams to develop and field radios with upgraded capabilities for the warfighter. I earned a degree in chemical engineering from Iowa State University. This education gave me the foundation of thought processes, problem solving skills, and the ability to learn new concepts that have been really important to me in my career. I've always been really interested in how things work and benefit that these products would provide. My interests tend to gravitate towards chemistry and math which is why this is so exciting for me to be part of the ejection seat system. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the ejection seat sequence. This is a sequence of events that will occur if a pilot on an F-15, an F-16, or even an F-22 pull the ejection handle and need to get out of the aircraft. There are 14 steps total that take place in less than two seconds, often at high speeds and high altitudes. There's an incredible amount of precision engineering and development that go into the ejection seat to ensure that the pilot can exit safely and live to fly another day. The first step in the process is the ejection handle. The entire initiation is started by the pilot pulling on the ejection handle. Some aircraft have one handle, which is called a center pull, and the other configuration is called a side pull and is comprised of a handle on each side of the seat. Don't worry though, if only one handle is able to be pulled, it will still work and the two handles will work together. Once this has been initiated, there is no going back. The ejection sequence will occur. The second step of the process is the canopy removal system. There are two different ways that a canopy can quote unquote get out of the way of the ejection seat. The canopy jettison system, which has explosive lines all along the inside of the canopy and is attached allowing for complete removal. The canopy fracture system has explosives above the air crew, which create intentional fractures in the canopy, allowing the ejection seat to go through the canopy to get the pilot out safe. The third step in the process is the inertia reel. It is located in the center of the seat back, right below the headrest. During the ejection sequence, it acts like a restraint and holds the pilot into the seat to ensure that they aren't injured during the exit of the aircraft. It keeps the pilot upright and stabilizes them to ensure that there is no spinal misalignment as they exit. The fourth step in the process is the canopy removal. Since this video shows the canopy jettison system, this is the point in the sequence where the canopy actually is left from the aircraft and you can now see the pilot open to the airstream. The fifth step in the process is the seat catapult. The catapult combines both the catapult, which is the propulsion boost, and the rocket motor, which is the propulsion sustainment, into a single unit that actually pushes the ejection seat up the rails and out of the cockpit. Most importantly, the catapult in the ACES provides a soft ride, which is really important in ensuring that the spinal cord, the neck of the pilot are held safe as they get this boost out of the aircraft. The sixth step in the process is the passive head and neck protection. This cradles the head and the helmet in place when the pilot and the seat enter those wind streams at those high velocities. It ensures that the head and the neck stay aligned to keep the spinal cord safe and ensuring the pilot will walk away and fly another day. This feature is of increasing importance, especially as pilots and militaries add more technology to the helmet that the pilot is wearing for situational awareness, navigation, or even just displays on how to fly the aircraft. The seventh step in the ejection sequence is the passive arm restraints. These are only found on the ACES 5C and are important to incorporate safety on arm flail or twisting when the pilot enters the airstream. This is very important to ensure that wherever the pilot lands, they have the ability to escape and evade and get out safely no matter where they end up. The eighth step in the sequence is the leg restraints. These are provided by two parts of the ejection seat. There is a shark fin at the top of the seat which holds the legs from getting too far out and the leg restraints which are passive which hold the legs in place as it exits the canopy. The ninth step is the pitot tubes. These are really important because they gather a lot of information and data that is necessary to determine what type of ejection we are going to need to execute. They look for velocity, altitude, wind stream, 
and also just generic information about the area around the pilot. They communicate these things to the sequencer, which is the tenth step in the ejection. The sequencer is the brains of the ejection seat. As all of this is going on, the sequencer is determining for the rest of the sequence exactly what parts will be used, how long those parts will go out, and what is needed in order to get to that final stage where that pilot is exited from the seat. The 11th step in the ejection sequence is the stay pack, which is short for stability package. And it's really a rocket and a gyroscope mounted to the bottom of the seat. This system is very important to ensuring that the pilot stays upright while they are exiting the aircraft and while they're in the in-stream that they don't turn or tumble, which would cause them to get caught up in their parachutes. The 12th step of the ejection sequence is the drogue parachute. At higher speeds, the drogue parachute is just as important for seat stability for the pilot and the seat. It is important to get the drogue parachute out quickly and reduce the speed of the seat aircrew mass to a safe speed that will allow for the pilot parachute deployment. The 13th step is the pilot parachute, otherwise known as the GR7000. At this point, that pilot parachute deploys, giving the pilot improved stability, steering, and drive, allowing them to have a safer landing and avoid obstacles on the ground. The parachute is intentionally three colors, allowing the pilot the ability to cover or warn after they land. The last step in the ejection sequence is the seat air crew separation. The deployment of the pilot parachute starts a sequence of actions that begin releasing the pilot from the safety features that have been holding them in place and preventing injury as they exited the aircraft. Things such as the lap belts, inertial reels, straps, leg restraints are all released. The seat and aircrew connection are disconnected and the seat falls away, leaving only the aircrew, the pilot parachute, and the survival kit. And there you have it. Another pilot who knew that when the time came, if he needed it, his ACES-5 ejection seat would get him out safely and that he could live and fly another day.